Well, joining us first, though, is businesswoman and advisor Catherine Sherwood, director of The Engine, and mindfulness and resilience coach John Shackleton, to look at how our small local businesses can help grow through creating workplace wellness, especially post-COVID. Good morning to you both. Nice to see you both. Good morning. Good morning. Can I ask you both, first of all, what have you seen or found that the um, COVID-19 pandemic has caused businesses to realise? Catherine, I'll start with you. Yes, that's really an important question. Um, it's actually highlighted just how unprepared businesses were for business disruption. Um, and it also made businesses really look at their people uh, more closely and um, really just to communicate better. Uh, mm. So we've been working really hard with business owners, uh, not just on what they weren't prepared with, but just how to look after their people through this situation. Yeah, fascinating. John? I think uh, a lot of businesses have realised that their people are a lot closer to the edge than they thought they were. And COVID, I think, is just the icing on top of the cake in terms of stress levels. Uh, but it's shown people that actually uh, a lot of people are struggling right now. Do you know what I was surprised by from a business sense, not just that um, New Zealanders were, were close to the line, how many businesses are that close to the line? As, as householders, we're told to save for a rainy day, you know, ideally have three or four months' worth of savings to pay for the mortgage, etc. We had businesses falling over in the first week. I mean, yeah. it was quite phenomenal. I, think, I, I don't think businesses look at it from that perspective. They see the ongoing view. They don't see a tomorrow view when yeah. things fall apart. And it's been drastic for a lot of people. Catherine, there are some benefits to businesses experiencing hardship, aren't there? Oh, look, absolutely. And I guess it's highlighted also just how important it is that they actually know what's going on in their business. Um, a lot of the uh, New Zealand business owners uh, think they're invincible, um, nothing will happen to me. Um, and, you know, I, we've spoken to so many businesses um, throughout this time and you know there's a lot of reliance on accountants knowing their financial position but in actual fact as a business owner you need to know your own financial position so mm. a lot of them actually don't even have good cash flow position to, to start with, uh, so they're really undercapitalised. Yeah, I guess people, you know, we had it good in this country for such a long time, and there's been a lot of outsourcing going on, and people have had individualised roles, whereas now you really have to have a really good umbrella understanding of what's going on. Yeah, yeah you do. I, I guess um, <coughs> it's also allowing people to be autonomous and to do the roles that they need to be doing. There's still a lot of micromanaging that goes on in businesses. And uh, one thing I say to business owners, if you want to actually scale up, you need to delegate to elevate. So in order to delegate, uh, um, you know, that means passing responsibility over to mm. people and allowing them to grow by working autonomously and letting them make mistakes um, and learn from them. So it's really important. I like that, to delegate in order to elevate. That's right. Yeah, fantastic. John, how do businesses measure to keep employees safe, healthy and productive? If you look at you know the last three months, we're working from home, we're working differently, we're stressed. But in terms of stress, so many people are on the edge. There's not a lot of point in measurement. You've just got to look carefully for the signs that tell you that this person is a, is about to flip their lid. Mm. <laughs> and those signs would be think you know very poor sleep habits for a lot of people. Not that the boss would be there when they're asleep. Um, it, whether people are actually their mood swings are very strong or not. Um, things like that. There are quite a few signs that you can tell whether an, in, an individual is over. Stressed. Do you think, though, like, I can't remember ever letting my guard down around an employer to show them the signs of my sleeplessness or my mood swings or whatever. Do you think employers are gradually becoming kinder and looking out for their employees more? And is it OK for me to let them know that I'm not coping? I think there's a big distinction. I think we're going down two different paths and some have got the yeah. message, some have really got it. And they're the ones that I think, um, I talk about it, they, they love their staff, they really genuinely do. Some of the others love their staff because they make them money. money. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, these people in the long run, I think they're not gonna succeed anyway. So I think the beautiful thing, this is actually beginning to highlight the necessity for genuine staff care, real, true, honest staff care. Yeah, and, and feeling comfortable that you're not gonna lose your job if you say, look, I'm having a bit of Break yeah. down right now. I need a bit of a break, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one thing I've learned about uh, being an employer of a lot of people is that um, I need to compartmentalise my stress as an employer, and um, you know, I might be stressed and I might want to share it with the team. You've got to balance what you communicate and what you don't, and it's always good to have solid sounding board advisors or people you trust that you can actually turn to um, in those moments of stress, but also know when to step away. So. Um, as employers, we 
we try to give the tools to the employee, we also need to be practising what we're actually telling people so to do. Of course, we've got to look after the business owners as well, or the, the bosses, in order for us all to keep our jobs. Catherine, what sort of benefits have you seen in businesses that have adopted a wellness strategy? Because wellness has been quite big for a couple of years now, not just COVID. Um, you know, there's been wellbeing things put into places, workplaces for a number of years now. Oh, look, absolutely. I think we're still a little bit behind in actually implementation of uh, wellness practices. I, I use health and safety as an example. Most people think health and safety is a case of people falling over and hurting themselves. Yeah. But the reality is health and safety actually covers mental welfare. Um, and uh, I still feel, because we're at the heart of dealing with businesses, that although business owners do love their staff, there is still an element of people taking situations for granted and we're not prepared. And so this whole business disruption has actually highlighted how unprepared people are. Mm. For example, people were like, what do I do? And the first thing I said is you need to communicate. You, you can't just shut the door and go away for five weeks and hope everything's okay. So that naturally brought out, well, we've got to actually implement Zoom and mm. videos and what if people don't have internet and how do we communicate with people in various different ways? And uh, my answer is, well, if 90% can be on Zoom, then you have to adapt for the other 10%. So we needed to adapt all the way through to ensure we didn't leave anyone behind. Mm. And uh, I guess my introduction to uh, businesses of having John go in there and help meant John actually had some of our clients and all their staff on a Zoom meeting uh, and talking to them, you know, it's okay to, to mm. wake up and want to be in your pyjamas yeah. and, and to work in your pyjamas <laughs> yeah. um, and not really be judging anybody for doing that. Um, so, In some ways, have some businesses come through with better practices now yes. post-lockdown? Without doubt. I think what's happened is this has brought the, the wellness right up front and it's crystal clear now. You can't avoid this. So I think some companies have really made steps forward in this, mm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I guess, um, in the statistic-wise, um, you won't believe it, but there's been 8,000 businesses that have applied for funding for people like us to be able to help them. And Because uh, that's available, isn't it, yeah. as part of... Well, yeah. it's actually not available because it's exhausted. It's been used, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, 8,000 people multiplied by, you know, the funding grant nationwide. So um, there's a lot of businesses that have actually missed out, but the ones that have actually have uh, received that funding have been grateful and... Um, I guess for, for the coaches and advisors within uh, the engine, uh, we've actually put additional hours into helping because we, you know, we, yeah. we actually have to talk to them before they're approved. You care, you care. Just finally, very quickly, um, tell me, Catherine, about uh, the wellness workplace wellness business forum that the pair of you are running. Yeah, look, absolutely. So Scottish Pacific is actually the uh, key sponsor for that program, and uh, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's a global movement, four-day week global movement. Um, someone somewhere Tim said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, someone somewhere said we had to do five days a week, but you know, that that's sort of like decades old now so um, we've got Tony Alexander we've got four day week global and we've also got John at this business forum so it's five hours of insight connection and takeaways that business owners can go and put into their business um, and, and really reconnect and that's really important right now. A little bit of mindfulness and breathing and meditation as well. Absolutely Fantastic. absolutely because if we don't practice it on a regular basis, nothing happens, no change. Absolutely. Nice mm. to see you both. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And to find out more about the Workplace Wellness Business Forum on July the 22nd, go to theengine.biz.